This is Eternal Blade here, and welcome to the first part of a new video tutorial series. Um, in this one, we're just going to be modeling an in wall air conditioner. Um, I'm staring at it right now, and I have a basic sketch drawn already. So we'll see if we can't pump this one out pretty fast. Uh, it'll be a lot shorter than my previous ones, which have been hours and hours, uh, because those are getting difficult to produce at the time. But well, let's get started. We'll start off by making a box. And let's just put it in here. We're going to want the length to be about 25, the width to be about, mm, I don't know, what do we want? Six, I guess? Yeah, let's make it six. And the height to be around 19.5. There we go. And this is going to be our basic uh, starting point for our air conditioner. The uh, basic build out of it. So to start off with, let's convert it to an editable poly, and select the edges here, and see about this whole graphite modeling tool thing. I forgot how to expand it. There we go. Oh, oh. It's not playing nice today. Um, hmm. What do we want to do? We want to. Flow connect, which is over here, I think. Yeah, there we go. So now we've connected it. Let's just bring this up to the top. And just for reference, we're gonna put another box here. Give it a height of 13.5, and that is where we're gonna want our line to end. So select that line. Just bring it down to it matches the box. All right. Delete that. Next, we're going to want to select the lines going the other way, and we're going to want to connect them twice. And whoa. There we go. Connect them twice, and let's just make another box. Put it over here. Give it a length of about, mm, say, five, and let's just bring it over to this side here, and then we'll copy another one over the other side, just copy, select your lines, and hit them, and hit that, or just, uh, where's the loop, oh, I'm sure I'll figure out where the loop is, there it is, let's hit loop, and let's just move them to line up with the boxes, all right, and we can delete those kind of boxes. Next, we're going to want to let's see, select both these polygons here, this and this. And let's just extrude them oh, backwards. Uh, eventually, we're going to want to extrude them backwards. Uh, so, yeah, just extrude them about two inches. So I'd say right about there. Alright, check it. And then, let's do some editing here. You're going to want to select this line and this line. And then connect them. And delete this polygon on the outside here. So now we're left with kind of an open gap and let's see how we can do this delete this polygon as well so now we just kind of have well, let's see what, what do we have and delete this one as well and this one we're trying to close this and make it a new space so go to your verts and select target weld and just weld these together. And this one. Alright. And then go to border. And I didn't do that quite right. So select this line here. And we're going to want to insert a vertex. So insert vertex and just put it in there. Next, back to vert mode, target weld, target weld that, and that. 
That should close off our border, and it did, and cap. All right, now we have one side completed. Because this is where the uh, little vents are going to sit. They can actually um, pivot back and forth. And let's do it to the other side. So select these same regions here. Delete them all. And we actually can do this another way as well. Go into Polygon, hit Create, and then just select the verts. And on the last one, double click. And it should do the exact same thing as what we just did. So let's just do it again. Uh, create. Click, 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 and double click. And there we go. Same thing on both sides now. Actually, it might not be, but no one will ever know. This vert here might actually not be connected to something else, but. Uh, yeah, see, it's not. Well, is it connected? Yeah, see, it's not actually closed off, but. No one will notice. So, now that we have that, let's just double check our measurements. So, go to box, and just, oops, sorry, go to auto grid, put a box up, make the width, sorry, not the width, the height. Uh, you want it to be, how much do we want it to be? I actually don't know, let me go figure out. All right, we want it to be 1.25. So set it there, and go back into your thing we just created here. Select both sides, and just um, actually we want to bring this box out the other way. So line it up to that edge. Go into your selection again, and bring these up to match the box. There we go, perfect. All right. We're moving along here. So now let's create. Um, I'm not going to create now. Let's select this, and select this, and we're going to create the illusion of some space. So that. So we're beveling right now, and just bring the bevel back. And there we go. And I'll decide later if I want to delete those or not. But for now, they can uh, stay right there. Next, let's create a box. Just create it right here. Go into your left view, or well, whichever view you started in. In my case, it was the left. And convert this to an editable poly. I'm just going to go into vertex mode here. And actually, let's bring this whole thing out a little bit just so you can see it. So back in the left view verts and let's bring them up so just bring it a little bit less than the actual thing so we want to have a little bit of gap to make it more realistic bring this down doing the same thing and on both sides we're going to want to leave a little bit more of a gap so it can swivel and over here perfect now the good thing is we're only going to have to create one of these boxes. So let's just go into your front view and press F3 to get into wireframe. Just bring it back and select the back vertices here. Just bring them a little bit forward past that first line. Because now uh, everything is lined up and you can see where it could potentially uh, swivel, I think. Yeah. All right. So it's like this. Go into wireframe and select the back one as well. We're gonna want to inset these about oh, I don't know, a quarter inch or so, and then we're gonna want to bridge them. This will make us a nice outline of a box. All right. Uh, from here, let's first do some chamfering on this before we go much farther. You're going to want to deselect these little outer edges here because they'll be a pain. And F3 for the other side. Come up here. Alright, and then hit chamfer. And let's give it a tiny little chamfer. And 
two should be good. All right, this way we can get a nice kind of smooth looking surface. All right, and go into your left view again. Now let's create another box. Uh, you can use auto grid if you'd like. We're gonna want 20 evenly spaced little slats, if you will. So create them and just drag them. All right, now you can see here our approximate length. So let's go to Editable Poly. And we'll go here, select the back verts, and just bring them a little forward. Because they don't actually go all the way to the back. I'm get these and bring them a little back, because they don't go all the way forward. Again, we can just select all the edges here. Give it a really small chamfer. Alright, uh, 0 0.01 should be good. And then we're going to want to potentially create 20 of these, but we'll just kind of eyeball it. And let's say 20, see how close we get. Wow, that's not close at all. So let's bring this a little further down. Alright, I'm just have them on copy. And that's pretty good. Just delete that last one. And we have our first uh, little part of the vent done. Next, what we're going to want to do is just kind of select a middle one. It looks like the middle at least. And because these are editable polys, you can just select all the middle things here. Connect with two segments. OK. Press R. And then control click your vertices here. And just scale them outward. Select your polygons and then deselect the back ones. We're going to want to pull this forward. This is a little uh, tab almost where you can make these things move up or down. Next, we're going to want to go back and edit a little poly here. Select one of your slats. Con oops, cancel. Press A for angle snap. Shift rotate at 90 degrees to make a new one. And then go to your left hand view here and just eyeball it into position and make a second one approximately the same distance away. If you want a quick way of doing it, just uh, make the dark part the same as the light part here. And so that'll be a good way to do it. And then the same on the other side. Alright. Perspective. Go into your verts, both top and bottom, and just slide them up until they're inside that little um, outer casing. Alright, and do the same for this one. And just come in here. Looks good. Next, I'm going to add a little poly, select both of them. And let's just bring them back a little bit, because they actually sit a little farther back. And let's see, what else do we need here? Well, that pretty much takes care of that one slab. I guess we'll uh, add a little bit more detail in there later on. But for now, let's, uh, let's see. Let's select the outside, and then hit edge, loop, Control click the polygons. Uh, why didn't that loop all the way? Well, maybe yours will loop. Actually, we don't want to loop, we want a ring. That's why. Alright, select all of them, and let's just scale them in just a bit. And actually, we want the verts for this. Because ours is a little bit too uh, big. Alright, um, let's see, this sh will be the end of part one, I will see you again in part two where we'll um, copy this over, do a little more detail, and probably start working on this front panel here.